Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much if you watched the last video. I really appreciate it. Today we're up at the shop working on my drift car that's right behind me. This is a car that I've used in the past to drift about two seasons, one practicing, one competing in the Lone Star Drift Series, which is in Texas. And uh, I will be competing this year and plan to if all goes well. I have a lot to do and uh, the first drift event is at the end of March so there's a lot to change get ready for and revive the car so I plan on doing that and taking y'all along with me starting out today I went ahead and took all the stickers off the outside of the car and um, that way just starting out with a fresh clean um, clean car and then we can go ahead and continue on I did leave some on the side just because um, I'm not going to take those off until I paint the car, but uh, as far as for now, I'm pretty much already did that because it was really time consuming, but basically just used a heat gun and scraped it with the scraper to get it off of the windows and, and the body panels. Um, I will be painting the car so it wasn't too much. Now if your car is really nicely painted, you might want to go a different route, heat it up with a heat gun and use your fingernail. Um, but as for me, I just used a razor blade because I will be DAing the whole car down and painting it. But I appreciate y'all watching. So like I said, I've already taken off uh, the stickers of the car. This is actually all of the stickers that were on the windows, back bumper, uh, spoiler, and everything else. So it actually is quite crazy. This is the banner right here. And it's actually crumbling because the car set out in the sun for about about a year and a half before it went into storage so i just used scrapes i still have to get some gooby gone and take this off right here um, but for the most part it's really clean it didn't scratch the the window so i just had some other stickers here along with on this side here i left these on the side just for now but this was all covered so i took that off had some back here and then along this back section right under the tail lights. So I've already done that. Now I'm gonna plan on taking off the fenders and the hood I'm gonna leave on since it will be outside and um, get the fenders done and then take the bumper off front and rear and probably the rear bash bar. I have a drift armor uh, rear bash bar on there so I'll probably take that off as well. I got the bumper off now I'm going to be taking the fenders off they are beaten and bruised uh, definitely right here and all of this right here is actually a result of hitting a wall at one of the vents actually I believe this whole section was round six um, the last time I drove it I actually hit one of those plastic K rails and it came up and dented all of this my hood and um, so it's pretty beaten so we're going to be getting new fenders so I'll be taking those off there's one bolt down here the rest are right inside and then right inside the door jam here there's uh, two I believe there so I'll be taking both of those out this headlights already out um, I believe I'll be taking this one uh, my sister gave me Hello Kitty stickers so I just made a whole headlight for her um, but this is broken as well along with the other one from hitting the wall so I'll be taking that out this fender and we'll be going from there. What I forgot to tell you about is there's actually two bolts under the rocker and once you get all of these off you can just lift it up over this back lip and it'll come off. So I got the headlight out so now both the headlights are out both fenders are off so now i'm going to be working on the stock crash bar i just ran this because we ran out of time um to making a bash bar but i'm actually for this season i'm either going to fab up a bash bar that fits into the bumper and wraps around each side or i'm going to actually tube front the front it just depends on um what what we have going on if we have enough time um, after putting the motor in and doing all that we actually have a uh, tube bender right there so it's not 
it's not a question of if we have the tools it's just a question of if we have time but the hits that I had on the wall it really doesn't look like anything was damaged everything is still pretty straight so I could just go ahead and just cut out the tubs and run it like this with a with a bash bar but I'm gonna go ahead and just plan on doing the bash bar and um, we'll go from there So I got all the bolts loosened up. Um, three of them are out. This is the fourth one right here. So after this one comes out, it should be right off. Just come straight out like that. A lot of people will make a bash bar that bolts in and a lot of companies do that's actually this is on the side here so this is where that stud is and then this is uh, where the bolt goes through they'll just make a plate um, and a lot of companies do this make a plate and then just slot this end and then put a hole just like that and it bolts right in to the factory location so if you're looking for an aftermarket bash bar um, a lot of people just make bolt-in ones from that stock location but what I'm actually going to be doing, if I, if I don't do the tube front, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take right here. Right here is the stock frame rail. I'm going to actually be cutting that back a few inches, boxing it in, and then I'll be making my bash bar come from there. Now if I do a tube front, I'll still be using that location. But obviously there's going to be more structural uh, tubes coming down into that location and then I'll probably make a bung with a pin through it and when I make each piece of the front end and or the tube front and the bash bar I think I'm gonna make two just so I'll have them on the truck uh, ready to go if something happens hit a wall hit somebody then I can just take out the pins or unbolt it pull it off and put a new one on so that way I'll just have already ready to go but as of right now I have the entire front end disassembled it literally didn't take that long at all um, but it's pretty simple so here's the inside of my 240 uh, when we did the cage we completely gutted everything so there's nothing behind here honestly except wiring gauge cluster and the quick car switch panel right here right now we just have it run basically um, just simply for these two so both of these on and then you push start it but we are going to be dividing it all up and rewiring it I have pro sport gauges that I'm gonna hollow this out and put all of them in here then wideband and uh, boost gauge here and then uh, we're gonna put fuel pump running lights uh, headlights and fans and then um, accessories and and uh, power here to everything inside so the gauges will be on a switch everything inside power will be on a switch and that way um, it'll all be set up with the individual fuses in here so I'm gonna go ahead and get the dash out normally there are uh, three bolts up here one two and three and then you'll have bolts down here on the side obviously this side I had to cut for the cage I do have um, that side cut but this side I was able to put a bolt in so I left it but I do have the anti-intrusion bars in here so if you run them correctly you can still see my ECU is tucked away nicely there so I uh, wanted that to be away from people's feet so the only thing I have to deal with is the wiring which will actually tuck back up um, if I mount it correctly but the ECU is actually mounted in the stock location as well as the fuse box over here and so that stuff's actually in the factory location with the intrusion bars um, it just depends on how you want to work it and put it so I'm going to get this pulled apart and um, then we'll go from there
loose right here. There's three on top, two over here, and I uh, got the gauge cluster, the bezel, the cluster out, and um, next will just be the center console section. We actually left the factory uh, plastic on the bottom when we made this and put a steel cover over it right here, a sheet metal cover, and then riveted in the quick car uh, switch panel here. So it makes it really easy. You can access the back nicely. We didn't end up putting any bolts down in the bottom section at all. So it's super easy to, to get out. So we just have to disconnect this and slide it back in here. So I've been struggling with this uh, panel here for a while, trying to get it orchestrated, but I found the easiest way. Just got to lift it up here. This is on my car because all of the wiring is still connected and I want to leave it intact. So I'm just going to slip it back here. And when we pull out the dash, it'll actually sit right there so we can do all of our wiring and everything that we need to along with the wires of the car. And now we can just pull out the dash. So I got it free, now I'm going to get it out to uh, one side here. So there we go. So the dash is out. Now, like I said, the only thing that is under here is wiring. So we had known that we were gonna redo this um, when we did the motor swap. So there is a little bit of excess over here for the power coming in. But on this switch panel, you have all of your grounds, your power and the start switch, uh, which we have already wired in um, right now just to the ignition harness. Uh, but we plan on wiring everything else. We have it labeled here along with wipers, which we are going to wire in. So the switch panel, I want to have wipers in case it's raining, anything like that. Um, we're going to not run the actual switch lever off the column. We're going to splice it apart and wire it up into a multi-switch. So like a one, two, and three um, along with that. So when we built the cage as well, all of this is in the factory location. We took out the bar that goes from left to right, but this bar, like you may have saw when uh, the dash was in, that has a plastic piece that goes over. It's exactly in the factory location of the plastic bar. So it uh, looks good. And I'm just gonna get, um, that's all I'm gonna do for in here for right now until we get the gauges in that cluster and start wiring them up. So I'm finishing up here tonight. I got a lot done on the car, a lot of progress. All the parts are over there. 
on a pallet I'm gonna put these outside but I'm just gonna be reusing the bumpers and the rest I'm just keeping just in case if I need it for some reason but definitely got a lot done on the car and that's all basically I'm gonna do for today so it's looking good definitely uh, set up for me to uh, to keep going 